Okay, again, welcome to our training. Just a quick reminder, um, everyone is on mute. If you have a question, just raise your hand and I will unmute you. Or you can type it in the question box. Um, and then we'll do questions and answers um, at the end. So if you don't have a microphone, um, you can just put comments also in the question box. And the session is being recorded and might be posted on A to J Author or our new YouTube channel, um, which I'll talk a little bit about at the end as well. So today's uh, training is going to be on program variables. So program variables, um, just the agenda, uh, quick what are they, the user avatar, gender, steps, navigation, true, false, incomplete, interview, and additional resources. Um, so what is an A to J author program variable? This might be something, um, these Program variables are things that you might not necessarily know about, but um, they're kind of behind the scenes A to J um, secrets, kind of. So the program variables are variables that control A to J guided interviews, um, features like avatars, the step sign, navigation buttons, and um, exit point tracking when you use save and resume. Some automatically show up in the variable list, and some are just a work in the background and are waiting for you to use them. So the first one is the user avatar. User avatar is going to determine whether the guide and the end user avatar are blank or tan. Right now, those are the two um, options that we have for the skin tone of the uh, guide and the avatar, but potentially in our A to J5 that we should be rolling out in 2013, um, we may have more options. But currently, it's blank or tan. You select the avatar in the interview tab. Um, this uh, is, the, is the tab where you go to probably in the beginning when you're creating your interview and probably never go to again. Um, it's where you put your title, jurisdiction, your logo graphics, your end graphics, what version it's in, any history that's gone on, where you select language for the navigation buttons, either English or Spanish. And as you can see circled, what the avatar, which is either tan or blank. Um, selecting tan or blank selects the skin color for both avatars for the entire interview. If you don't choose blank or tan, A to J author just defaults to blank. The user avatar program variable appears in the variable tab, but as you can see, it doesn't show up as used. The used is a zero here um, because it's never actually used in a question. The um, variable user avatar also is available and shows up in the preview mode of A to J author. When you select uh, interview variables, you can see it here at the bottom left, user avatar tan. Um, just a quick reminder for when you're in the variables tab, don't delete this um, when you're cleaning up your variables. A lot of times people clean up variables and delete all the unused variables. Don't delete this one. It's not used uh, in a question, but it is used in the interview running in the background. The second one is user gender. So user gender determines whether the guy or the end user's avatar is male or female. So you have the two samples here, two options. Um, if the user selects male, we have a man. If the user selects female as their gender, that shows up, um, this, the avatar representation shows up as a female. The, uh, this is one of those pre-formulated questions that shows up in A to J author. When you start a new interview, you have about three or four uh, preset questions, and gender is one of them. It's always there. Um, and you select, the user selects their gender by having the gender question, whoever, here it's a program variable, a, sorry, a macro, um, that displays the end user's name, please select your gender, they choose male or female, and then their guide avatar pops up. Um, in the back end, in A to J author in the fields, this question, the type is gender, the label, you can have the label whatever, but it's preset to gender, and the variable itself is user gender. So leave this variable. You don't want to change it to the naming conventions. We talked about in the past um, how our doc assembly community all uses um, 
a standard naming convention with a two-letter moniker at the end, don't use that here for this variable. Leave user gender. Because it's a program variable, it doesn't have to match uh, the naming convention. And this gender question is not mandatory. Um, there's been talk in the community about um, gender sensitivity in some uh, fields and some uh, doc assembly projects. So if you don't want to have just make them select their gender, you can always have no avatar walking along um, and it'll just be the guy, the female guide. So that's always an option. You can always leave out this gender question. You just won't have an end user avatar. This question also, like the user avatar, appears in the variables tab, and it appears in the preview mode interview variables. However, it shows up as used because it actually is used. In that last question, we asked them what their gender was, so we used the variable itself, and so it shows up as used, as a one, and it populates user gender showing what they've selected in the interview variables. So let's go to A to J test that out. I have my interview here, one that was created for um, a demo today. So here we're on the interview tab, avatar blank or tan. If I select blank, we go to preview, my guide, and eventually my the end user's avatar is basically just an outline. Um, paper white is a good um, way to remember what, what color blank is. If we go back, and select tan, go to preview, um, the skin tone is a little bit darker. So those are both options for end users. A to J author 5 is probably going to have more options for you guys. So then, um, if we go into our questions, the gender question is, um, it can often be combined with the name question. So we see it here, please enter your gender, please enter your name and select your gender. And the type is gender, variable is gender, user gender. Preview this. They enter their name. And if you select female, hit continue, a female uh, avatar pops up. If you go back and select male, it will change when you hit continue, and a male avatar pops up as well. Let's go back to our presentation. The next in uh, program variable to talk about is A to J steps. So A to J guided interviews have up to 12 steps that should act kind of as an outline. This is the path, as you can see here, that the avatar is following to the courthouse or whatever end graphic you use. The courthouse is the default one. So it's the different colored bubbles that they hit each time. And within each step, you can ask as many questions as you'd like. There's no limit. But there is a limit that you can only have up to 12 steps. And one of the program variables allows you to coordinate or to um, decide what's on the language of the signpost. So there's two ways to do it. But every A to J signpost has a coordinating step variable to go with it. So A to J step 1, A to J step 2, A to J step 3, etc. So the standard way, or this, the first way to set the signpost language is within the steps tab in A to J author. You add your steps here, plus or minus. Here I have four steps. Um, that access to justice is always the first one. It's kind of the blank info information section. Um, then four different steps. If you wanted to change the language here and have it standard throughout the interview, you could just click, double click on the text box and it'll pop up and then you can edit the, the text within that box. The second way to do it is to use the program variable. So you can set the signpost language to change based on what the, the end user has given you um, information they've put in before. So for example, this question would ask, um, what, is the, what is your spouse's name? And after they press the button, so after they enter the name and hit continue or next, whatever my button is, um, I've created a condition, one equals one, so that this always happens, it'll always be true. I want A to J author to set the variable to a specific value. So the variable is the program variable, A to J step two, 
and I wanted to set that to the spot to display the spouse's name plus an apostrophe S and information. So instead of the signpost saying spouse's information, I wanted to say John's information or Peter's information, whatever the end user has put in for their spouse's name. And you, to do all this, I'll show you in A to J author, but always make that condition something that will always be true. So one is always going to equal one, whatever. And here we have that question, what is your spouse's name? Here it shows spouse information because the end user hasn't yet put in a name and hit continue, so that advanced condition hasn't worked yet. But after they hit continue, this person put in Zach as their husband's name. It then shows Zach's information. So it evaluated the condition. Um, unlike the user avatar, which always appears in the variables tab, A to J steps with their corresponding number only appear in the variables tab when they're actually used by the author. So if you don't use them, they won't ever be in your variables tab. There'll never be a zero unused sitting there. It just won't appear at all. Only appears when you use it. And it appears in the variables tab and also in the interview variable section in preview mode. Let's go to our A to J, and we can go into the steps and see here that step two is spouse information, and step three is child information. So we go into preview. Please enter your name. We've done that. Enter the date of birth, and we're qualified to use this. Hit continue. Are you married? If I was not married, if the end user was not married, if you select no, it'll just take them on to the children's information. Won't ever ask about the spouse's information. But yes, we're married. And what is your spouse's name? Jane Doe. We hit continue. See here in the background, it's kind of covered by the learn more. But in the background, it shows spouse's information. Once we hit continue, it now says Jane's information. So that changed from spouse's information to Jane's information. So let's look at this question. That change happened in the advanced tab. Here's the condition. After they press the button, after they enter their spouse's name, one equals one, always true. I want them to set, I want A to J author, if true, which it will be, to set this variable to A to J step two. And I want to use a, um, a macro to display the variable spouse's first name TE. So I gathered that in the question. I went to first name, here's the variable again, spouse's first name TE. And to do it, I put I wrap it in percent signs and enclose it in a bracket because there are spaces in my variable name. Add a plus sign and put in parentheses the information or the words that I want to display. So I want a parentheses with a apostrophe S and the word information to display. So then it displays here Jane's information. If we continue, it asks if I have children. So the signpost back here said child information. If I say I have children, yes. And if I say I have three children, all of a sudden the signpost back here has changed to children's information. If I go back and say I only have one child, it changes to children's information. Saving here, let me clear. So I had to clear out past information saved. See there when I put one child, it just says child information instead of children. But if I select more than one child, it changes it to children's information. Okay. And then the next uh, thing to talk about is the A to J navigation true false program variable. So this might be something you didn't know you could turn off in your A to J guided interview, but by default, we have the back, the next, and the my progress bar that runs across the top of every interview. And in fact, you can turn that off so that it displays nothing at all. Um, 
with this, you do it by setting an advanced condition. And you tell A to J author, um, because the default is true, you want to change the default if something happens to false. So in this term, say you wanted to turn off the navigation in a complicated loop. Um, you're asking about multiple children's information, um, or you have a loop within a loop, and you don't want them to be able to basically exit and go back, and you want them to just stay within the loop and finish it. Um, you can turn off the back and the next button and the progress bar just for that set of questions. So let's see that in A to J author. So the question about children, let's preview it. What is your annual income? This is, this is showing up late because I cleared the variables, but um, spouse's income. All right, children information. You see, I no longer have the backed, the next, or the progress bar. So let's go back real quick. See that again from the beginning. No progress bar. But if we go to the question before it, Hold on, it seems to be stuck in one. I don't know why it didn't come back. But as you can see, it's been evaluated um, that there are that the progress bar has been removed. So let's look at how I did that. In the advanced tab, on the question, start of the question that I want to ask, um, do you have children? I Second condition, my first condition is if they don't have children at all, I just want to skip this whole section. But my second condition is before the question is even displayed, if 1 equals 1, which it does, so this will always be true, I want to set the um, A to J navigation true-false to false, and that therefore it will turn off the navigation bar. You could also set a, second, a question after this loop to turn back on the navigation bar. Um, so once you've gone through maybe the complicated children's loop, you can have it go back and uh, turn back on the navigation bar there as well. And the navigation bar uh, program variable does show up in the variables tab, but again, only when it's used by the author. So only when you guys use it will it show up. If not, it's just going to default to always being on and will not show up in your variables list. And then the last one to talk about today is the A to J interview incomplete, true, false. This tracks whether the end user has exited the guided interview using the exit to save option. So save and resume has to be enabled before this even comes up, but A to J author will track where, what question they've hit exit from um, and take them back to that specific question when they resume the interview later. It doesn't appear in the variables tab or in the variables window um, in preview mode. And there's two important things to remember about the A to J interview incomplete true false. The user must select exit in at the top of the at the top of the screen. Uh, in the navigation bar, and then they have to hit exit again in the exit question. Um, and this variable is stored behind the scenes in the answer file that goes to the LHI server. It's not necessarily stored where you can see it on the interview. But let's go um, to our A to J again and see this. So here you can see with uh, save and, the save and resume feature, save and exit feature, you always have to have an exit question that's kind of hanging out all by itself. So here is the exit question here all by itself. And it's not connected. You can see that it's not connected to anything. Um, and then it, um, it just hangs out all by itself. And it's a question that you would use language from your um, 
your programs come up with kind of explaining the process. You know, once you exit, you're going to have to go to LHI and create an account. Um, you have to save your answers. You can always come back once you log back into that account. Whatever the language is that your program uses, um, you have it there. We always like to give them and recommend a back button in case the end user decides, oh, wait, 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 that's too much hassle. I just want to go back and finish the interview. Give them the option to return. Um, so this exit question, you have to designate it as the exit question here at the bottom with this section right here. The default is for this to be have no question, but um, if you want to use the exit save and resume feature, you have to designate the exit question. Pick it. I've picked my standalone question, save and exit. If you have a question here, when you're in preview, you'll, your end user will have an exit button up here that takes them to their standalone question. If, however, you don't have a question here, if I change this and then go to preview, there's no exit button. It's gone. So let's make a save and exit. If we go to this question, the options, exit, save, and complete form, return, resume the interview, go back. Okay, so now I see we have a question. Let me go back to my slides. Okay, let me pop this out real quick and see. Um, the question is, I'm having a problem with one of my interviews when using the go back to interview button at the end of the interview. Do you know where it is programmed to go? Beginning of the interview, last page, etc. My t interview is totally inconsistent. I'm going to unmute you, Steve, so that you can ask this question. Actually, it doesn't seem to have audio. Um, do you know where it is programmed? Um, I'm not sure if you mean right here, um, like if you do save and exit, where does it go back to your interview, or if you do a return. So maybe you can explain that question a little bit better. And um, the second question is, what is the max number of characters visible in the steps if caps are on? Um, or no caps, or if mixed, I'm actually not sure what the max number is. Um, does anyone know if there's a max number of characters? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, Steve, so sorry about that one. And the other answer, return to the interview at the LHI screen. Uh, LHI screen. Um, it should be set for wherever the end user, um, it's set by that A to J variable, A to J interview incomplete. So they should be going back to wherever they exited the interview, wherever they hit that exit button at the top of the navigation bar. Um, and that is where the A to J interview incomplete saves their spot, basically. And that should be taking them back to that last, last uh, question they were on when they go back from the LHI screen from the LHI site once they exit. So does that answer your question? Okay, um, I'm not seeing any other questions. Do you have other questions? Okay, so Okay, Steve is saying that it's not using exit, not using the exit button, just save the answers and re-enter the interview. Um, I'm actually not sure about that. I can follow up with you, Steve, though. Um, if you want to shoot me an email and I can pass it along um, and see uh, maybe if I can get that answered for you. And my email will display on the last screen here. So um, additional resources. 
we have A to J authoring guide. Chapter 5 is on the variables tab, and then specifically pages 41 through 45 talk about program variables. Our online tutorial, um, the average gen avatar gender, how to set the default. We have trainings on A to J author. And we also have a new YouTube channel, so you can look for trainings and videos there. Um, once our semester ends, uh, actually tomorrow, um, Andrew Medeiros and I are going to be working on kind of cleaning up some of our trainings, recording new trainings um, through December and January, and so we're hoping to fill out our YouTube channel a little bit more, and also our a to j author.org. But, um, so search for us, a to j author, and check out those trainings as well. And uh, if you have any questions or feedback, here is my email to you for you. And a quick reminder, we have our A to J Author Advanced User Forum coming up in two weeks. And we're actually going to be showing a little bit of our mobile design ideas. We're um, getting pretty far into our A to J 5 development. And we have um, some pretty interesting slides to show you about our mobile design. So make sure to come back with that. I will send a reminder out to the Doc Assembly community. Um, and you can find a link to the training on our A to J website as well. And a quick thank you to Cali for letting us use their go-to service, meeting services. Um, if there are any other questions, I can stick around for a few minutes, but thank you for attending.